welcome to Talk of the Bay. I'm Christine Barrington. Well, the craft of printmaking is ancient by the standards of human civilization, going back to 3000 BC with early Sumerian seals of state. However, the art of printmaking could be considered even more ancient, even pre-homo sapien, if you consider what may be the world's oldest cave art, a series of seemingly deliberate handprints and footprints left by two young children around 200,000 years ago. My guests tonight have a special kinship to printmaking. Robin Smith and Jane Gregorius are artists and art educators who both taught for decades in our local colleges and exhibit and teach nationally and internationally. They have lived fascinating lives following the inspiration of their muse and all of that life experience is poured into their work. Robin Smith is the founder of a special event that started local but subsequently ignited in to a global phenom. It's called Print Day in May, and for 24 hours, as the day unfolds around the globe, participants in over 80 countries join in this powerful celebration of creativity. By nightfall, they share their work online, creating a community chain around the world. Joining Robin and Jane is Melissa Kreisa, artist and founder of our flagship downtown art gallery, Curated by the Sea, and it has a special exhibition going on right now featuring the art of 14 world-class printmakers, including Jane and Robin. And so for the next 30 minutes, we're going to delve into the compelling world of printmaking and how you might participate yourself during Print Day in May. So Robin, Jane, Melissa, welcome to Talk of the Bay. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is really going to be fun. So um, I, I hardly know where to begin. Uh, Robin, Jane, after looking at your websites, I was so fascinated um, with the story of your journey through art. I really regret we only have 30 minutes. And since so all of you, there's a blog post up about this show, check out their websites, really interesting stuff there. But since this show is about printmaking, let's start there. So Jane, you actually got an MFA in printmaking, whereas Robin, you studied painting, ceramics, and sculpture. Correct. And then developed Mm -hmm. into a printmaking artist. So I want to uh, ask each of you to simply say what compelled you to go into printmaking and what you find beautiful about this art form. So Jane, how about we start with you? Okay, well, I actually knew very little about printmaking when I was an undergrad. And um, I was just walking around at uh, Cal State Long Beach, and I ran into the printmaking department. It was just all the kind of people I loved, people that just sort of lived in the studio day and night. And uh, it was, and the process was lithography, which is kind of difficult to explain. But I thought, well, I'll try that. And I wasn't interested really in an advanced degree. I was just loving doing this. And I took that, and then I took another one, and I took another one, and finally somebody said, you better get a committee together for your MFA program. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'll get serious about this. Wow, I love that. Just simply slipping down mm-hmm. the path of what lights you up. What a exactly. lucky career choice. That's uh-huh. beautiful. Yeah. Okay, thank you. How about you, Robin? Well, I also did not I really didn't know much about printmaking at all. And I had sort of avoided it like the plague because it seemed very fussy. And it seemed all about just making multiples and carve, you know, and sharpening tools. So I really didn't do much with it all through my education. But I did love the collaborative nature of ceramics and sculpture and sitting by the kilns and all of that. So eventually when I did start making prints, I also got sucked into that life like Jane did. But I actually began, I was a painter too, and I was teaching at UCSC. And I could use the print shop as a faculty member. And their their print shop is unbelievable. <laughs> and uh, so I just started spending Sunday afternoons kind of painting on plexiglass plates and running them through a press. And I got completely hooked and eventually realized that I was paying people for press time and my kiln was sitting idle. So I kind of switched over. I've always been a painter all the way through, but you can't do painting, printmaking, and ceramic sculptures. Too many processes. But when I switched out the ceramics for the printmaking, there was just no going back. 
Mm. Now, what do you think it is about printmaking that's so addictive? I, Jane, I sensed you had a little more to say before I pivoted. Oh, no, not not necessarily, except that I, I suppose it is addictive. <laughs> and there's it's, it's difficult in some ways, so it's really fun to pursue something that's challenging you mm-hmm. like that. Um, and there's so many things, so many ways to do printmaking. I mean, painting, there's many ways to do that, too. But printmaking, I, I mean, I could list a hundred different ways to do printmaking from, as I said, lithography, intaglio, woodblock printing, monotype. It just goes on and on. Hmm. There's a lot of instant gratification oh, involved. Yeah. Ah, here we get yeah. into the addictive. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> There's a lot of magic. There's a lot mm. of collaboration. I mean, very mm. when you first start, very few people have their own presses. So you're working with others. And there's something so exciting about what happens when uh, the way I look at printmaking is it's a mark on a surface that gets transferred to another surface through pressure. Mm. And something that happens when it is under that pressure Mm. that you don't expect you can never really Mm -hmm. know what it's going to be like so it has elements of like raku ceramics where you put it in a kiln you think one thing's going to happen something completely different happens but you're happy Mm. so gosh it's like a metaphor for a well-lived life (laughs) you know you do your best and you surrender (laughs) right yeah Yeah. there's a lot of surrender you you never know you never know so um melissa i want to pivot to you as uh, a, a gallery owner who gets to curate shows you got to make this invitation and and have it coincide intelligently with Print Day in May. And so right now, there's a marvelous exhibition going on in your gallery called About Printmaking. Tell us about it. So um, I have been fascinated by the community of printmakers, as these guys were talking about, but I am really, I don't know much about printmaking myself. So when we started talking about doing the show, I I actually talked to Jane first because... um, A friend had said, you really need to connect to the printmakers at the tannery. There's a lot going on down there and some fabulous artists. So Jane and I had a conversation about possibly doing a show. And then the very next day, Robin walked in and said, hey, do you know about printmaking, Print Day in May? And would you consider doing a show? And I said, funny that. So the stars kind of aligned. And we sat down together one day, the three of us, and just started brainstorming what the exhibition could look like. And again, I hadn't. I don't really know the community very well, just know that it's a fabulous community. And um, these two are experts on the techniques and tools and also um, on who's out there and what they're doing. And one of the first things we said was we wanted it to be, since both the guys, these guys are also fabulous teachers, um, educational and inspirational. And so we came up with a list of artists across the country who were masters of their field or their tools and techniques, but also um, used different tools and techniques. So we came up with 12. Oh, 12. I got the number wrong. We have 12? We have 13. I can't 12, 13, 14, more than 10. 12 or 13. In a very (laughs) fine exhibit, it is. Yes, it is. Yes. And so um, coinciding with Print Day in May, you have this fabulous exhibit and then um, we're also going there's a workshop that's going to be offered we're going to talk about that but um, maybe since the three of you are all probably very familiar with the work that's hanging in the gallery right now maybe Mm -hmm. you could describe to our listeners why these particular artists were invited in from all over the United States um, just to to whet people's appetite and get them curious to come on in and look for themselves. Well, like I said, we just sat down and we just sat there and brainstormed on who had, who were the experts in their toolbox. Mm -hmm. And these guys started thinking through the different types of printmaking that they wanted to express and then just identifying folks that they knew of and their art was top notch and Mm -hmm. you guys can expand on Uh, that. Could you share one, one of the artists that particularly lights you up? Well, there, yeah, there's a woman named Robin, besides me, Robin <laughs> McCloskey, who Jane and I both know, who lives out on the peninsula. And she does what's called photopolymer uh, 
printmaking and she's got these she's just a um, masterful in her craft but also brilliant in what she expresses in the work it's very complex imagery but very accessible at mm -hmm. the same time she has three pieces that represent uh, American states. I think it's Illinois, California. I, I, was, I was seeing them. I'm like, there's mm -hmm. one. I'm, I'm always greedy when I'm in the yeah. gallery. Yeah. <laughs> the one of California. Isn't it fantastic? I, I want that piece. Yeah, yeah, I know. She is yeah. really something. But, you know, when we were making these, these decisions about these artists, we really first made lists of techniques mm. because we wanted to cover a lot of ground. Everything from lithography to relief printing, to monotype. Mm -hmm. So once we narrowed that, because as Jane says, there's hundreds of different techniques you can look at, then we started to look at, well, who do we know that has a connection to Santa Cruz mm -hmm. on some nice. level, right. but that is really masterful mm -hmm. in their technique? Would you say more, Jane? Or Oh, sure. Um, uh, well, one of the artists that I am crazy about is a woman from Nebraska, the University of Nebraska. Her name is Karen Kuntz, and she has started, she has a fabulous studio that she started, and she said, my goal is that no more printing presses ever leave Nebraska. And <laughs> I, I was I so that. impressed. I'm from Nebraska, so that means a lot to me. But anyway, Karen does wood, um, wood block printing. But in a, in a really unusual way, a, a contrast to her is Juan R. Fuentes, who is also in the show, mm -hmm. who does the kind that you think of black and white, stark, um, possibly social imagery and so on. And Karen does these soft, gorgeous things that just, I, I mean, I just salivate when I see her work. I love her. And I visited her studio in Nebraska, too, several times. Um, she... Uh, she to me is she just never does a mediocre print or she ne <laughs> she has nothing ever does a print that has like oh i don't like that part of it it's all glorious mm -hmm. so um and i agree with robin about uh robin mcclowski mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm -hmm. what a what very memorable her oh, work. yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. well if you have just tuned in and you're wondering what we're talking about, this is KSQD Santa Cruz on 90.7 FN FM, and in the studio is Melissa Kreisa, the owner of Curated by the Sea Gallery downtown on Front Street next to the Ma. She has an exhibit going on right now called About Printmaking, and we have in the studio printmakers um, Robin Smith, Jane Gregorius. They their work is also on display in the gallery right now, and um, I want to talk a little bit about about your. Work work as well. Um, Robin, your series that's on display, it, it's interesting. It's features, it's about the Ukraine. Could mm -hmm. you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I, I always work from photographs. And the photographs that I began seeing when the steel plant was being occupied by the Ukrainians mm -hmm. um, last spring, they were very compelling. The, the just the building itself and the town and what was going on there. And so I started squirreling away a lot of photographs and I went to a place called In Cahoots Residency Program up in um, Sonoma for a week. And I took a ton of photographs with me to work from and I pulled one of Mariupol and started doing a print about it, and then I just never pulled anything else. I, for mm. a week, I just mm. kept working on these images. So they're very straight-ahead monotypes in that I draw and paint on a piece of plexiglass, and when that drawing, painting is done, take I guess each one took me about two or three hours to do the drawing, and then I just put a piece of paper over the top, run it through the press, pull it off, and it's a one-off print. And I did a few wow. things to some of them. I added some color later, but pretty much they are very straight ahead monotypes. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things we wanted to feature in the show is we have a lot of complex mm -hmm. uh, techniques, but my work is actually very, very simply done. Wow. But it depends a lot on drawing. Right, it uses that skill that yeah. you got in your in <laughs> all my yes, work. and uh, and hopefully they're compelling as images, and that they express some of the 
uh, just craziness of this war. Just, right. you know, it's, right. I'm calling, they're really remembrances. Right. So. Right. Beautiful. Well, Jane, I want to talk a little bit about your work, but I feel compelled. I just have to play a few seconds of the song I heard in my mind while I was looking at your work. The lone wild bird in lofty flight is still with you, nor leaves your sight, and So, um, Jane, I love the story that I read in the gallery about this series that you have there. Will you describe to our listeners a little bit about why I'm playing The Lone Wild Bird? Oh, that's so beautiful. You should just play the whole thing. <laughs> anyway, um, Robin mentioned a type of technique of printmaking called photopolymer. And um, I was taking, I, I do a lot of walking and, and photographing as well as Robin. And I saw this bird uh, laying on the ground, <clears throat> no longer alive. It was just so beautiful, and I took a picture of it uh, among, I don't know how many things that day. But I made a photo photopolymer plate, meaning that you actually expose a positive to a plate that has been coated with an emulsion, and then you can print it, and it will look like a photograph. It's just perfect. But this one, ca this came out so well, I just couldn't believe the clarity of it. It was just, you know, it was just the craft was working for me so well. So um, I, I printed it, and that would be the end of it. You know, print, it's a, an addition. I could print 10 of them or 100 of them or whatever. But I printed a few of them, and then I was like, mm, you know, I, I, it'd be fun to put two or three of these together. So I started cutting them out, and then I cut out the backgrounds. I had... I had what would be called negative space, and I also had these little sticks, and I cut those out. And so I made about a hundred of these pieces that are just birds and sticks and backgrounds and, um, and printed on various kinds of papers and so on. And I've always liked to do that. I've always loved to see how many ways can you say the same thing over again and mm -hmm. over again. But anyway, um, so that's essentially what is going on in those prints. And then at the end of the series, I had bushels of backgrounds. I just had all these cut out pieces that I saved, and so I started putting those together. And I, so two of the pieces are compositions about, and they're called Outsides 1 and Outsides 2. So those yeah. are yeah, and these beautiful. Yeah. It's like a black bird, right? Is it like yeah. a crow? Yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's not, yeah, you know, it's, it's not. I don't know what it is. And everybody asks me, and I'm thinking, oh. it's a bird. Uh, it's a bird. It's a lone <laughs> wild bird. <laughs> but so the palette, so, the palette's yeah. so lovely too. Yeah, oh, the beige yeah. and yes. the you said yeah. the cement color of the of the ground the, the that you ground, saw. Yeah, there was this really neat, yeah. beautiful yeah. accidental really texture that I didn't know about till later. Well, uh, yeah. So thank you for that that description. Um, everyone listening can tell there's a very compelling exhibition happening right now at Curated by the Sea, and it coincides also with this very special um, event that, uh, Robin, you began here. Um, tell everybody about Print Day in May, how it got started, what it's all about. Print Day in May was started 16 years ago. We are celebrating in our sweet 16 this year. <laughs> And it began on the campus of Monterey Peninsula College, where I taught for 30 years. And a number of my printmaking students, we had a very tight-knit community, and a number of people had gotten so good at what they were doing that they had started buying their own presses and setting up their own studios, and people were sort of flying away a little bit. And I was like, no, come back. So I said, wouldn't it be nice if we all got together on a, maybe on a Saturday and we could just all print from these different places and all open the studio at school. And so anybody who doesn't have a press can come to school and work. And we'll just call each other on the phone and say hello and send pictures back and forth as to what we're doing. And that's what we did. That was the first print day in May. And we basically said, when should we do it? 
Let's do it in May. It rhymes. Print day in May. That sounds great. We'll do it on Kentucky Derby Day. <laughs> First Saturday in May every year. But we didn't know it would be every year. We just knew it would be that year. And then the following year, we wanted to do it again. And we started inviting people who had come in as visiting artists and people who we all knew and said, hey, why don't you do it too? And then at the same time, social media started to sort of rear its head. And so we all started to um, send each other things. And I had students who made a website and then said, how about this Facebook thing? And then how about this Instagram thing? And so it just started to mushroom. Mm -hmm. And for about two years, three years, I was like, I want all 50 states. Mm. You know, I'm kind of, I love geography. So mm. I'm like, I want somebody from all 50 states. <laughs> so then when we got all 50 states, it was like, hey, how about some more continents? <laughs> so eventually it became a worldwide thing. And we got sponsors mm. who do giveaways. Mm. And uh, so educational places, print shops also print uh, supply houses, mm. they they don't have to spend any money. They can just give prizes to tagged works that they like. And so it's a win-win for everybody because, mm. you know, people get gifts or get prizes and the sponsors get recognition. And so now we have something like maybe two dozen sponsors too and a team every year. And so we're working on close to 100 countries, all seven continents, as we have penguin footprints coming in from Antarctica. Wow. And um, that's what we do. Wow. Well, you know, I love this um, chain of connection that goes around the world. And it, frankly, it just sounds like fun. It's really so, fun. <laughs> this is great. So if you're listening and you're like, wow, that sounds really cool. All the artists are going to have fun, but I can't take part in print day in may melissa what would you say absolutely you can well there's two events first friday may 5th um we'll be hosting an artist reception again for uh for the show and a lot of the artists come and you can have all your questions answered about printmaking and that's gonna the reception will be from 6 to 8 p.m with live music in the gallery and then on saturday may 6th which is print day in may um we'll be hosting the um workshop in the gallery as well as uh, following Robin along on, on social media. Oh, wow. So there'd be like, are you going to have like a big screen TV with like pictures going? Oh, you know? Ooh, we might just, yeah. it's, like, it's like being in a sports bar, but better. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yes, we need to collaborate on that now. Yeah. Thanks so, for the idea. And, and the Nita Mosquito thing is who's conducting the workshop? Mm, Jane Gregorius. Jane Gregorius. <laughs> so, Jane, what's the plan? Well, this is a, a very fun sort of a... Uh, beginning print, uh, getting your toes wet on the print in the printmaking area. Our uh -huh. fingers, maybe. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. <laughs> toes are wet. wet and kind Not of even a hand print, <laughs> just a fingerprint. <laughs> kind of inky. Anyway, it's called a uh, trace monotype. And it's, uh, and there'll be uh, plates of various colors. By the way, these colors are, will be cal calico inks that I just want to give a little little shout out to because mm -hmm. they're, they'll be donating the inks. And um, so there'll be the col colors red, yellow, blue, yellow, and black. And then people will move paper into these, sm face down into these papers, and then they actually draw from the back or press from the back or score from the back or twist from the back or roll from the back to make marks. Mm -hmm. Then you lift it up and you say, oh, that's my red. Oh, and then you move over to blue or yellow or however it works. It's uh -huh. you might have to be there. <laughs> to make okay. have I'm, this make I'm, sense. I'm way more curious now that you've given those details. Even <laughs> if you don't, you get that kind of sense of what's gonna be happening. But yeah. you you know, it's all free. You get to uh, you get to bring something home with you and, and I have a partner in crime whose name is Lou Lee and she's a, a very experimental printmaker and she's a lot of fun and so we're gonna make sure you all make a print. So if somebody's kind of wiggling in their seat and they're like, I want to do this. So exactly where will it happen and at what time? 12 to 4, May 6, 703 Front Street. Downtown Santa Cruz. Downtown Santa Cruz. It's Period right next the to the Maw, 703 Front Street. Because the last time I had you in, Melissa, we had 
callers very upset with me because I didn't give the address <laughs> 703 Front Street, yep. Saturday, May 6th, free print workshop. And you can say that you took part in print day in May. And one more little plug. We have yes. all of the art from the current exhibit online at www.curatedbythesea.com. So you can see what we're talking about with Robin and Jane's gorgeous work. Yes, curatedbythesea.com. Well, thank you so much, Melissa Kreisa, Robin Smith, Jane Gregorius. It's been uh, just a blast, and I hope to see you Saturday, May 6th. Great. All right. Thank, thank you so you. much, Christine. Thank, thank you. you.